Yeah, you asked me about my paintings on the wall here. This is original art from, uh, that's like Brian Hitchhawk, man. That's a Billy Tan Green Lantern. Those are all Rafa Sandoval Green Lantern things. That's, uh, can you see the XO in the corner there? Yeah, that's uh, that's the first time Eric puts on the armor in XO Man of nice. War. Oh, I love that. And then that's from Demon Knights. That's Bernard Chang. That's the uh, first time somebody drew my name as credit. But you were commenting on how they look so symmetrical. Dude, yep. if I take those things off the wall, I don't even know how there's still wall there. Like I put so many <laughs> nail holes yeah. behind these things <laughs> trying to get them to line up that it looks like somebody took duck shot to it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. It's terrible. But I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to hang the picture of it. Ain't nobody going to see. So That's right. Matter. That's right. <laughs>
you know, I've got some Exo Man of War art hanging on the wall back there. Uh, you know, working with Kerry, working with Lee Garbett. Uh, it's where I met Rafa Sandoval and first started working with him. And then he and I went on to do Hal Jordan and Green Lantern Corps with each other for a ton of issues. Um, so yeah, it was, it was such a, such a great experience. Uh, that whole time working at Valiant, building something new, going in the writer's rooms and all those things. Uh, you know, I'm still really good friends with those guys today. And that's why I'm still working with them a bad idea. You know, Dinesh Warren, Josh Johns, Hunter Gorenson, uh, Carl Bowlers, Adam Freeman, you know, the whole crew. Yeah, that's awesome. So awesome. obviously we had, we got, we got Exo Man of War, but like you mentioned, Hawk, Hawkman, Superman, Green Lantern, uh, like these are, these are some heavy hitters that, that you've written. Uh, would you say that like cosmic, like giant characters like that, is that your thing? Is that where you like the most, most comfortable? I do like it. I do enjoy it. Um, I try to do something different with everything I take on, you know, like the first book I did was called surrogates and it was like a very cyberpunk, you know, sci-fi kind of story. It was like mm -hmm. a five issue miniseries. It was done by an independent publisher and it, it it did well. It had some success. And a lot of people were like, you know, just be the sci-fi guy. Like he did it, you know? Yeah. The next book I did was like a modern political medical thriller. You uh. know? And then uh, after that, I adapted Percy Jackson novels and made comics out of those, you know, Percy Jackson Olympians, if you know those books. Yeah. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. every project I do, I try to do something different. So even though I think if you, if you look at it very broadly, you know, Exo Man of War and Green Lantern might seem similar. I have a lot of fans ask me if there would ever be, once I invented the Exo Army, they wanted to know if there was, not invented, created the Exo Army. Uh, um, they wanted to know if there would ever be like a like an Exo Green Lantern Corps crossover, you know, because I was doing both those books <laughs> at the same time. But to me, they're very different. I mean, Ark of Dacia is a, is a time-displaced Visigoth, you know, and, and the themes of it's that story are very different than Hal Jordan, the modern-day fighter pilot, you know. Right. He, uh, he's Ex Air Force pilot, we call it the Chair Force out here in Georgia. I don't know if you guys. Wow. Are... We might have heard that wow. before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you guys. I'm, 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 I don't know if you can tell what I'm thinking. My tears are welling tears. up, but I'm smiling. Yeah. Like, oh. I'm totally messing with you guys, man. My cousin's in the Air Force too. He retired from the Air Force, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. But uh, hey, actually, the reason why I even know that phrase is I was in Atlanta Airport and there was a Marine. We were both at the curb waiting for cabs on our own. And at the time I was writing Green Lantern, kind of new. And so I was handling John Stewart, who's a Marine, and Hal Jordan, who's in the Air Force. And I was like, dude, you know, I'm a writer, this, that. If I wanted, you know, John Stewart to insult Hal Jordan, uh, like in a military way, what would he say? And the guy would be like, Chair Force. And I was yeah, like, cool. yep. that's awesome. 100%. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyhow, <laughs> just kidding around. But uh, um, so, yeah, even though they look the same, I think they're very different. You know, I think Hawkman is different than those books. And even if they're different, and characters are different also sort of uh you know stylistically and publishing plan right like how during the green lantern corps came out twice a month it was a, it was a bi-weekly book you know uh hawkman was more of a character that had a lot of continuity that that needed to be addressed and needed to kind of be dealt with and it's probably the most continuity heavy i got in terms of research and things like that mm -hmm. you know the superman when i worked on that it was monthly self-contained stories you know so i try to really mix it up with everything that i do i do like working on superheroes but I like doing different things as well. And uh, that's fun. A part of what's really enjoyable about that idea, right? Like those things are just, you know, tankers is so much different than everything I ever did. And I like to kind of put stuff out there and I hope that people read it. And, and instead of reading my stuff over and over and over and saying, yeah, that reads like a Robert Vendetti book. I want them to read it and be like, I didn't know Robert Vendetti could do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I kind of well, enjoy that stuff. If you ever find yourself wandering over to the house of ideas and uh, giving them pitches, just, letting you know might be a i think there might be like a specific character that you'd be yeah. especially awesome at uh I, I don't i you know silver <laughs> surfer would be cool fantastic four would be cool i'll tell you the same thing i told warren way back in the day i don't know the first thing about either one of those like i know the very broad sort of pop culture you know understanding of those characters because i saw silver surfer in a fantastic four movie right mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a regrettable uh, version. But, yeah, yeah. Best sure. one. That's, that's the fine. Best yeah. comic movie ever. <laughs> but uh, and the same about Fantastic Four. I know about. I know who they are, sort of in broad strokes. It was the same for Green Lantern. It was the same for Hawkman. Only thing I knew about Hawkman when they asked me about Hawkman was that it was the most confusing character in comics, and that's why I wanted to do it because I wanted to see if I could fix it. You know. I, I think you. I think it's. 
I think it's, in my opinion, and in a lot of the people that I've spoken to's opinion, it's the best Hawkman run, I by and large. Yeah. yeah, working with Brian Hitch on that, you know, he he, um, the appeal to him as well was there was a lot of opportunity there. This was a character that, you know, conceptually we both liked, but you know, just continuity wise was very unfriendly to readers you know right and there was a lot of opportunity there if he and i could come together and sort of you know fix the character in terms of the continuity and make it understandable then we really will have left our stamp on something which is very hard to do now because you know green lanterns had their stamp and batman's had several stamps and sure. you know captain america's had their stamp right but hawkman was one of those few characters kind of out there that was a big character that went way back but hadn't had like necessarily that defining run, you know? Right. So, uh, you know, working with him on that was great. And what we were able to create together uh, for that series, again, I'll always be proud of it. I got Hawkman art on the wall too, you know? So <laughs> can, can I, can I have a fanboy moment real quick? Sure, yeah, um, for it, yeah. I'll try, I'll try to be, I'll try to be cool about it. Um, <laughs> so your eternal warrior run is like pff, so badass. <laughs> um and my favorite part, um, I actually I broke out the trade uh, just so I could reference it. But yeah, yeah. the the best part of this, the whole run is awesome. But the best part is when he fights uh, when he fights uh, Herder, and Herder's got like the giant hammer. And right before he fights him, he has like the flashback. He's like the things that have uh, people think that I've learned a lot from living multiple lives, but what I've really learned from is all the times that I've died. And then he goes back to like getting like learning that having a big heavy shield and like a coat of armor is not the way to defeat like a hammer. And it just, yeah, just yeah, yeah. is just awesome. I appreciate um, it. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> super proud of eternal warrior. You know, I feel like by the time I got to eternal warrior, I really had kind of started to figure out monthly comics more and be able to think about it in terms of individual story arcs, but also a longer thing that you're, that you're doing. And I figured that out with exo man of war along the way too, but with Eternal Warrior, I knew that I wanted to just be a father and son story. And I thought Eternal Warrior was such an appealing character that was really kind of underused in the Valley universe. Definitely. Uh, looked, looked over a lot, you know, and, you know, kind some of, of my very favorite things. Yeah. yeah, some of my very favorite things about when I worked at Valiant involved Eternal Warrior, even when I was doing XO and the relationship I built between, you know, him and, and Arik and, like, the first time they fight, you know, and he's like, you know, I taught you everything you know. I didn't teach you everything right. I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, nice. like, <laughs> what would it really mean to be a guy who's been fighting like this long, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Ra Raul Allen, uh, you know, when we launched Eternal Warrior together, i never even seen art like that, you know? And it just really opened up the possibilities of what we were able to do in the storytelling there and the mythology that we were able to build. That's another one that I could have done for 50 issues, you know? Uh, so it, that that's i'm glad you brought that up because it's such a short run um yeah. and i really when i got to the end of that run i really did want a lot more of it uh right. did you have any other like plans or like arcs that you had in mind that you just didn't get to do yeah there was a lot of things uh that i wanted to do like i, I toyed with the idea of actually having uh galad bring callum back to the present uh to oh. go like when when he saved him they were going to end up in in the present together and he was going to be like, you know, Valiant's Hawkeye or whatever. He was going to be the bow. Ah. You know? um, so we talked about things like that. But ultimately, it just came down to sales. And Eternal Warrior is a hard sell. I mean, the market's just hard, you know. Uh, mm. When you're not working with the big, huge name brand characters, like, I don't think people really understand how hard it is to do what VEI did when they came back and to take these characters that nobody had ever heard of. And go out there and put out quality books month after month and in terms of storytelling you know just punching way above their weight class you know big time that's so hard to do when you're fighting against batman and spider-man and superman you know yeah. um so but, I was but, but, but you're doing that now with bad idea right sure it's a bit different right bad idea we're creating like entirely new stuff we're not really right. doing a shared universe yeah. and those kinds of things like tankers isn't even a superhero book you know it's it's much I, more indie, which is like where I started out, where I came from in the beginning. My very first comics were indie comics, you know. So um, I think it's a different style. Uh, it's definitely a different approach to the marketplace uh, in the way their pub plan works and the way they're handling their PR. I mean, 
I don't know if you guys saw me in the tank, like, you know, driving around the tank video and all that kind of stuff, the promo thing that we did. Have you guys seen this? No, uh, I, I did I, not see honest, that. I, I did not see yeah, that so, one. We, we've been following pretty closely too. That's surprising. Yeah. So before tankers launched, uh, sort of when the announcement came, I think for the, um, sort of the solicitation of the first issue, you can still go watch it online. I went to a place in, in North Georgia where you can pay to, to like drive a tank and, uh, uh, Actually, it's an armored personnel carrier, but it's called Tank Town. And you can uh, dig with an excavator, and you can shoot a uh, 50 cal machine gun, and like do all these things. And so sounds very had, Georgia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a video. A buddy of mine named Brockton McKinney came, and we kind of wrote a script, and we pitched it to Valiant as like a PR thing. Brock does a lot of their video assets, and uh, Josh Johns at Valiant. I mean, at Bad Idea started working with us on it. And we really kind of leveled it up. And it was like a two minute promo video of me being a method writer, meaning I have to research everything that I write. I have to live the material. So I mm -hmm. went to the one place where I could drive a tank and yeah. dig for oil and shoot dinosaurs. And like we had inflatable dinosaurs and I <laughs> shot them with a machine gun and like the whole bit, you know, like that's that's bad idea was like, that sounds cool. Let's do that. Like, I don't yeah. know right. too many publishers, you know what I mean? But like. That's kind of just their approach, you know. They want to be outside the box and they want to, you know, be off the wall and creative and, and all methods of, you know, not just, you know, putting out stories, but how they how they market them and and how they how they sell them out into the world and even when they write there in DC, there's always something in the Indicia that's like a funny line or whatever. Yeah, it's so, too bad it's over. It is over. Yeah, outside. it's too bad. Yeah. Mm. And also, also. Mm. Uh, for that video, uh, we're just gonna put it right here. Hi, I'm Robert Vendetti, professional comic book writer, and I want you to know about the new Bad Idea comic book series, Tankers. As the world well knows, I'm what's called a method writer. That means before I begin a project, I don't just study the material. I <laughs> So to take a deep dive into the subject, I came to the one place on Earth where I can operate mechanized combat equipment, dig for oil, and shoot dinosaurs. Texas T, baby! I'm down to the tank! No oil yet? Every second of my immersive research experience guarantees the tankers is unlike anything you've read from me before. I should know. I've read everything I've ever written. Tankers is about a crack team of mercenaries and mech suits who work for Greenleaf Oil. They get sent back in time to divert the comet to kill the dinosaurs. More dinosaurs in the past means more oil in the present. Who doesn't love that? And with a superstar art team providing breathtaking covers and interiors, Tankers is an action-fueled thrill ride of human versus dinosaur warfare that we can't wait for you to read. So go ahead, order Tankers today. I guarantee I'll be glad you did. As for me, I'll be finishing off these dinosaurs. And uh, and that was the video, uh, Dinesh Warren. Uh, everyone, I apologize. Please don't copyright strike us. Because <laughs> <laughs> no man, video. spread that thing uh, far wide. I think it's got like, <laughs> I mean, we had like ten thousand views like in the first like day, because it just blew up. More so because I mean, as much because it was just the video is really good, and my friend Brock just did an amazing job filming it and editing it and putting sound effects to it and whatever. But also, I think it was so unexpected that I would do it because I'm. I'm usually, you know, I'm the guy at the comic book convention that wears a collared shirt and uh, professional and whatever. Uh, right. If you were in the military, like, you'd be chair force. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, actually I, I wanted to go into the Navy. I had a stepbrother that was in okay. the Navy. He was on a destroyer in the Navy, which I know the Marines don't like the Navy anymore, probably don't like the chair force. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, Navy is what I would have done. I grew up in South Florida. I was like the ocean. Okay. Best, look, best uh, looking service dress, hands down. They do, yes. I mean, I no, don't know maybe. if I can pull it off like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm Richard Gere and I can pull off you know, <laughs> off to the gentleman or anything, but I give it a shot, you know? Yeah. 
So going back to uh, Tankers, uh, so we know issue three is out. Uh, unfortunately, Judah and I have to get ours mailed in from out of state. Um, we're caught up so, to two. But we're, yeah. but okay. we're in two. Um, yeah. Where you guys get your stuff from? I get mine shipped to me from Titan Comics in Dallas, Texas. Okay, and yeah. uh, they're on point. Um, Jeremy over there gets me my books usually like about three days after Wednesday. So it's crazy because you said you're in, oh no, you're not you're not in Hawaii anymore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm in El, yeah. now I'm in El Paso. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the closest that's the closest place to get it. These books They're, are hard yeah. to get. I think the closest one to me is in Savannah. Uh mm. uh about an hour and a half away. I wish I wish there was one here in Savannah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, no, is it in um State Galaxy? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. Galaxy Comics or something. I'm looking it up right now because I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I feel bad. That's it, exactly right. Yeah, Statesboro, yeah. uh Galactic Comics and Games. Uh, real good dude, real good dude. It's just, you know, COVID and everything else and, you know, getting books out. Uh, Judah definitely gets his before me, so. Uh, and I spoil them. That, I don't uh, even have tankers too yet. Do, do, you want me to, do you want me to tell you what happens? Or? <laughs> 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 I don't even have it yet because there's no place around me where I can get it. You know, I yeah. mean, they're, they're going to mail it, you know, bad ideas going to send it to me, but sure. I don't even have it yet, yeah. So we will we will spoil it for you. But uh, yeah, where did where did you come up uh, with this idea? Like uh, talking stuff? with the guys, a bad idea, you know. Talking with Warren Simons, uh, just building it out, you know. It, it really, you know, you guys sound like you've read a lot of the stuff that I've done, you know, and it's it's totally different than everything I've ever done, right? Like, uh, and that was just very freeing, like to just be that absurd because I'm by nature I'm a very sort of logical methodical sort of thinker you know and that was a big help to me when i was you know working on you know uh hawkman or when i was trying to sort of rebuild exo man of war and get him away from a guy that would eat a turkey leg in the snow or hide behind a house plant in the corner of the room and and really you know turning into something different you know like you know being very sort of meticulous helped me there tankers was just something where like we just made our own rules and went out and made a story and we uh, Are these more like endgame rules or more like uh more back like to back to the back to the future rules? I guess they're like tanker rules. Like honestly, I don't know that I <laughs> ever really sat down and like thought about like how does this time make sense? Uh, well, I, I mean that's did a... that with Exo Man of War and like I drew Dinesh a picture and like you know, whatever. But with this, I was just like that I don't think that matters. Like they're just here for the giant mechs fighting dinosaurs, you know. Well that that so, was gonna be my next that actually answers the next question. So it was more or less for me, whenever I watch as a consumer the, the time travel stuff, uh, I can't help but nitpick at the paradoxes and, and wonder how are we going to fix this or that. Um, do you think about that stuff and and how do you kind of close those loops? Is there a process you use? Or, and you answered it, uh, I, I said here, I wrote down, or do you just want people to not think about it so much and just enjoy what's happening? Yeah, I think it depends on the story, right? So, like, I do always have a plan, you know, like, the reason why X of Man of War feels like a complete story or why Eternal Warrior feels like a complete story or Hal Jordan or Hawkman or whatever is I always knew what the last, I knew what the first thing was going to be and I knew what the last thing was going to be. So if it's only 12 issues, I can do them. If it ends up being 50 issues, I can do them because I know the beginning and I know the end. Mm -hmm. And in between, it's just coming up with new ideas of what I'm going to do for this arc and this arc and the next. So I always know where things are going to, um, so if it's, if it's something that's a more, I don't want to say serious, but something that's, you know, not as, as you know as much of a tongue-in-cheek thing as tankers yes i will sit down and think about those things and try to make them make sense and i'm sure there's plot holes in my stories that i didn't catch or whatever but um, i mean it's time travel i, I think I, I... my stuff's pretty tight <laughs> you know what i mean yeah tankers i didn't care mm -hmm. like yes. tankers is so absurd on its face and it opens with this boardroom conversation and the ceo is saying these absurd things like you know uh tankers you know, would make a great movie Scotland, but he was born with texas in his heart you know and all like, right and he keeps he keeps addressing the boardroom that has one woman as gentleman and Jennifer. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, it, yeah, it's right. just so absurd on its face. The whole concept we're going to go back in time and divert the comet to kill the dinosaurs so there's more dinosaurs that die and we have oil. Yeah. That I'm not going to so, worry about the nuts and bolts of time travel. Right. Problems, you know. What, and there were which, definitely some people who called me out about it. And we're like, this doesn't make any sense. And blah blah blah. It's fine. It's but not. But doesn't it though? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, mean, I think you, it makes perfect sense within the yeah. context of the story. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My thing was, I've, I've heard some people say like, oh, if, if, a, if a corporation could do time travel, that's what they would do. And I'm like, yeah, 
Yeah. Then find if a way it, to make more money. If, if yeah. it's left up to the corporation, uh, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pinko lefty, but it's like, yeah, no, I can see that. Like not make the world better. Let's figure out how we could, uh, uh, make more money. And yeah, I think it makes sense. I think your book is, is a documentary actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically. I hope somebody films it. To be honest. Yeah. I was, I, I was, I was going to say, I would, I think that would, out of all the things, I think that would be the one that's most would translate best to film with oh, yeah. maybe That'd like so much fun. Maybe with like the Tropic Thunder uh, staff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great, great example. You know, of like just that Tropic Thunder where it's so absurd on its face that you just kind of throw like you just like it. Yeah. Or a better example would be Bubba Hotep. I don't know if you ever seen Bubba Hotep. Yes, Hotep. with Bruce yeah. Campbell. Classic. Yeah. So, so like if you start off in the beginning believing that this guy's maybe Elvis. Then you also believe that that other guy is JFK, and like right. you know what right. I mean. Like you, within the all of the story has to do is is obey the rules within its own self, right? It doesn't have to obey. Tankers doesn't have to obey the rules of Back to the Future. It doesn't have to obey the rules rules of Terminator. Like Terminator has to obey the rules of Terminator. That's right. Tankers right. has to obey the rules of Tankers. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that's really the kind of the approach that I I took to it. You know? It's an it's an awesome series. Um, bef before I ask you this next question, I just want you to know that when I read Hank Howard, in my head I was reading it in this voice the perfect. entire time. Yeah, yeah, perfect. You should yeah. do the uh, the voiceover of the like the head head head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, I I will. I've I've made I've made videos where I narrate your work before. I did the the Eric speech at the end of uh, Exo Man War video. Well, I tweeted it out. I think, I think yeah. you saw it. I think you saw it. Yeah. Warriors of Earth, hear me. In my time, I have known many enemies. The Huns drove my Visigoth people from their ancestral lands in Dacia. The Romans hunted us like wolves. The armor hunters wanted to destroy me, as did the Dead Hand machines. Now, a new enemy has come. Some call them the Torment. Others say they are gods. By any name, we have all witnessed their fearsome strength. But unlike the Huns and Romans, the Torment do not come from land. Unlike the Armor Hunters and Dead Hand, they do not come from me. They come for everything! Everything we have ever been, and everything we will ever become. They come for our thoughts, our memories, the lives each of us have lived. Armies of man and vine, we march now together to defend all we have bled for and all we hold dear. There can be no retreat. There can be no surrender. There is victory or the end. Oh, oh yes, I did. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's another Hank Howard story in the back of Tankers number three. Um, so that's a classic example of bad idea. You know, I said to Warren, you know, I wrote it. I had an idea. I woke up on a Saturday and in my head I had, it was hot, Florida hot. And I was like, it was hot. a Texas story. You know what I mean? Cause I grew up in South Florida. I worked at a Chuck E. Cheese, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> method, method writer guys. I got to live it. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so <laughs> I, I wrote the whole script by like noon. It was done, you know? Awesome. And I said it to Warren. I was like, you didn't ask for this. I'm pretty sure you don't want it, but here's a story about a pizza detective, you know? And he was like, we love it. It's great. You know, we're going to have David Lapham draw it. I mean, that's crazy, right? Right. Warren's so, ride or die. Yeah. 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 No, that's not true. I definitely have had him, uh, you know, I have you know, he definitely turns down stuff for sure, yeah. you know? Yeah. But uh, if he likes something, you know, I got a pretty good hit ratio with him, I'd say, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he puts Lapham on it and then Lapham just goes all mm. in. You know, and just draws this thing with like it's completely serious and real, and uh, I love it. I'm super proud of it. I've got a Lapham page in, coming in the mail that I bought from him uh, that'll be on my wall soon, and uh, nice. it's just fun to do those kinds of stories. You know, oh, yeah. I can't wait till my Tankers three arrives. I'm I always get so excited when I get those. Um, so kind of going forward, uh, what can we expect to see from you in the future? Um, and talking about comics but also side projects non-comic stuff um pitches that you might have for the big two i know you're probably not going to tell us about those but uh yeah. i don't know what what uh what does the future of robert venditti look like well i would say uh the the big thing i've got coming out next will be superman 78 uh that i'm doing for dc 
So we're doing stories set in the universe of the Richard Donner, Christopher Reeve, Superman. Oh, oh, wow. yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, the first one comes out uh, awesome. August 24th. So that's like, I don't know, three weeks, I guess. Three weeks from Tuesday. Uh, Wilfredo Torres is drawing it. Uh, they, they just put a five-page preview up last week, uh, if you want to go check it out. I'm super proud of it. As I was saying earlier, I didn't grow up reading comics. My first experience that I remember with superheroes as a kid was Superman 2 in the movie theater. Hmm. And Superman has always been my favorite character. I love Superman. Um, specifically, that Superman, you know? Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not a project, you know, that people ask, is it a dream project? Not really, because I didn't think it would ever exist. You know what I'm saying? So when they asked me to pitch for that, it's it's absolutely a dream come true to be able to work on it. The first story is he goes up against Brainiac, um, and we're you know, the, whole, the whole thing's done. Uh, the whole thing's written. We're on the fifth issue in terms of the art, so uh, we got a lot there. Uh, I'm super proud of it. I hope people check that out. Uh, there's another project I'm doing at DC that uh, has not been announced yet, so I can't talk about that. Um, bad idea i have three other projects uh that i'm doing with them uh two of them are one issue away from being done and the other one uh i'm still more in the middle of um so you know i don't know what's going to happen with those now that bad idea is going away yeah Yeah. i I was thinking i was like well that's sad we'll never see yeah so i don't know if that's too bad they try to get the rights back to them or something i don't know we'll have to see how that shakes out um (laughs) i have another creator own project uh that i don't want to announce yet but that'll be coming out uh can you give us like a genre can you give um, us like action mystery i would say action. erotica i would say <laughs> it's action erotica yeah okay oh, nice. but, <laughs> um i would say i would say primarily action but just like a little bit a little hint of like near future but it's not like sci-fi or anything like that okay yeah. all right okay nice. um awesome and then some other stuff too. Yeah. Uh, I'm fortunate that, that uh, I'm able to have a pretty good amount of stuff uh, going on. You know, so. that's Cool. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, ladies, gentlemen, and MBs, uh, that is our guest, Robert Van Diddy. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, for everybody out there, make sure you go to Bad Idea, find out where you get, you get them from. Most of these people will mail them to you. Uh, because it's over, and so you want to get them while you can. Got to get them. While you can. Got to get them. Million dollars on eBay. Mm-hmm. Uh, God <laughs> yeah. bless their soul. Uh, also, go get vaccinated and continue to wear your wear pass. Shit's getting real out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you again. See you guys. We're out of here. Peace. If you want to hear interviews from industry pros, get first looks, and have access to endless comic content, wake up. Please wake up. You're in a coma. Your mother misses you.